In this video, I will be introducing the concept of density. Density is mass divided by volume. And I'll be using that to calculate uh, the density of this particular box here. This box has a, uh, has a length of about 10.3 centimeters, a width of about 9 centimeters, and a height of about 3.9 centimeters. The volume of the box is the length times the width times the height. If I multiply those out, I get a total volume of 361.53 cubic centimeters. The mass, 52, in this case 53, there's 53 grams, is the mass of the box. So if I take the mass of the box, the 53 grams, and divide by the volume of the box, I'll get that the box has a density of 0 0.147 grams per cubic centimeter. So that's the volume of that box, the mass, and if I take that mass and divide by the volume, I get a density. This is a sharpening stone. The sharpening stone has a length of about 10 centimeters. Do be careful in using these rulers. They don't start at the end of the ruler. The zero starts partway up on the ruler. That's true for many rulers. So I'm measuring from the zero, not the end of the ruler. And so I've got a length of about 10 centimeters. And I've got a width of 4.4 centimeters. And a height or thickness of about 1.5 centimeters. If I multiply that out, I get 66 cubic centimeters. I take the mass of it, 136 grams. And I can divide those two. If I take the 136 and divide by the 66, I get 2.06 grams per cubic centimeter. 2.06 grams per cubic centimeter. So I can do this for any object. Here's a 1 gram styrofoam block. The 1 gram styrofoam block is about, well, it's about 10.3 Centim it's, uh, sorry, it's about 5.5 .5 in this direction, 5 in this, and about 3.2 this way. I multiply those out, and I get 88 cubic centimeters. Take the 1 and divide by the 88, and I get 0 0.011 grams per cubic centimeter for the styrofoam. It turns out that uh, water will have a density of 1 gram per cubic centimeter. This here is a 607 gram measuring cup and I'm going to add 500 cubic centimeters of water to it. There we go. There's 500 cubic centimeters, roughly speaking, of water. A little bit more. Get right up to the 500. There we go. So I've added 500, and I've got 1101 grams of water minus that 607 for the uh, measuring cup itself. And I, I get just around the 500 grams that I expect that I've added, added to this. A little bit less, about 490 grams. Uh, 492 or so grams of, uh, of water. But to within the accuracy of my experiment, these 500 cubic centimeters of water give me about 500 grams, one gram per cubic centimeter for water within the tolerances of my measurement, something to get used to in physical science. Measurements aren't always exact. So the density of water is one, if the density of the object is more than 1, it will sink. The sharpening stone has a density of 2.06 grams per cubic centimeter. When placed in water, it sinks. The styrofoam, it sank. The styrofoam has a density far less than 1, and of course it floats. So density... In the metric system, uh, as well as in other systems, but in the metric system, if it's less than 1, it will float, and if it's more than 1, it will sink, and that makes the metric system 
fairly easy to work with. In fact, there's a direct relationship there. One gram of water is one cubic centimeter of water, and it has a mass of one gram. There's one other relationship we can derive from this. I know that density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. If I multiply both sides by the volume, multiply by the volume, it cancels on this side, and I get density times volume on this side. Turn it over, and I get mass equals density times volume. M is the letter we use for mass. We use this funny-looking P. It's actually a Greek letter rho uh, for density, but later on in the lab, we'll have to use the letter P. It's our calculator won't have a rho on it. And a capital V for volume. So I can write this as mass is equal to density times volume. If I write it that way, then I've got the form y equals mx, where I can put volume on the x-axis and mass m on the y-axis. And the slope should be the density of whatever I'm measuring if I have different amounts of it. So I can do the volume versus the mass, and if I have multiple items made of that same material of different sizes, I should get a line on a graph. And that will be the focus of the laboratory. The first laboratory will be looking at the density of soap. You'll need a bar of rectangular soap, something that's a squared off soap with a length, a width, and a height that we can use to calculate the volume. And we'll get the mass from the package itself. Uh, when you buy it, the package uh, will have the mass in it. Uh, that's on the actual original package, not on the individual ones. So you'll need to have a look at the original package. This one says 85 grams. And in the lab, we'll use the mass from the packaging to do this experiment, starting off with the whole bar of soap. You can see there it is indeed, 85 grams as promised on the package. And the Volume we can calculate by using a ruler to measure the volume. So key points, density is mass divided by volume, or mass is equal to density times volume. That's the equation we're looking at this week. That's the equation underneath the system of density, volume, and mass. It ties together mass to volume. And with the soap, we'll be able to figure out if the density is less than 1, the soap will float. If the density is more than 1, the soap will sink. And we'll get that slope from the slope, we'll get the, sorry, we'll get that density from the slope of a line on a graph. The density of the soap will come from the slope of a line on a graph.